So let's talk about you haven't polished a car yet. You want to get started. So I'm going to go back to the old days, the old batty days, way before YouTube, back in, you know, this would be like early 2000s. I was, you know, half the size I am now, had hair, you know. <laughs> this, is, this is a long time ago. This is old New Formula Red S2000 days, uh, RSX Type S days. So this goes way back. Uh, and, and so I'm going to maybe give you a little different take. Uh, I'm going to at least going to give you my take. I tend to think about things a little bit differently on what I would do is if I was a couple of different situations when I was young and didn't have a lot of money and I really like taking care of my stuff or maybe uh, it doesn't matter irrespective of age, but I'm not really into this, but I'd like to improve my paint. Uh, so this is not for you pros. This is not for you seasoned detailers. Uh, this is me uh, attempting to get you to what I believe to be sort of a minimum acceptable space where if you're a particular person in other aspects of your life or you're becoming a particular person, uh, I think that's very different than somebody who's just looking to do it on the cheap. Uh, and so I want to keep the cost down, uh, but this isn't the version that you do it on the cheap. Uh, so I'm going to polish the rear trunk lid here, and I'm going to talk about like the necessities, the things that I think you should start with. Uh, and the first thing, the reason why I haven't launched this or talked about this before, is I didn't really have a machine. I didn't really have a pressure or a pressure washer, a polisher um, that was appropriate for this particular project or, or, or me building a sort of progressive polishing step. The OG polishing package with all the polishers that I prefer is like 2,700 bucks. That is not a start out for anybody. I don't care how much money you got. That's generally not where you start. Uh, and so we need something that's a bit more reasonable, a bit more appropriate. And the thing that makes this possible is this guy. So my recommendation, I get this question asked probably more than anything else, uh, is what polisher do I start with? What polisher do I get? And uh, should I get a hybrid? Should I get something that can do multiple sizes? Should I get a three inch and try to use it all around the car? My answer is, and this probably goes back to 20 something years ago, uh, because this is how I started. My answer is you want dual action. So you want a random orbital dual action polisher. Uh, now we have these machines that are long throw. Uh, I think you want to step up to long throw. This is a, a Griot's G15. So it's a 15 millimeter orbit. Long throw meaning it's has a bigger orbit than the traditional machines, the eight millimeter machines back in the day, like the Porter Cable and the original Griots. But you want to start with a five inch. Uh, I can get most of the car done with the five inch. There's going to be some tighter areas, especially on modern cars with you know tight angles and stuff that you're going to miss. Uh, but if you're going to start out, you're going to start out with this guy. You're going to start out with one of these. Uh, this has some unique features to it, which I think are interesting. Uh, I rail pretty heavily or pretty hard against a lot of the knockoffs. Uh, if you don't have a spidey sense for that, uh, you got to be careful with most of these manufacturers have invested nothing. They've provided no, no like real you know, value to us in the detailing world. Uh, and they're just stealing, you know, property. They're stealing intellectual property from companies. Grios Garage, I feel like they haven't done that. This is, you know, this is Rupes-like, um, but they've sort of built this from the ground up. I'm sure this thing's probably made in China. Yeah, made in China. Um, but it's, you know, it's designed in Tacoma by, you know, Jeff Brown and team at Grios Garage. And uh, this, I think, is a really appropriate practical machine, especially if you're starting out. This, again, is a couple of levels up from a base machine. Uh, but for the price, you get a detachable power cord. You have the, you know, the speed controls in a really ergonomic position. You do have, um, I don't really like the handle on this thing because you shouldn't be holding it this way. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this machine is the cornerstone of what you're going to need to start polishing. Then your second machine should be a three inch not the other way around. This is, again, this is my take on this. Your second machine should be this if you're starting out. If you have the coin to get, you know, Rupes or Milwaukee or some of these other, you know, new battery power, the Merca is like 880 bucks. If you have the coin, you probably want to watch a different video. This is, again, one of those two scenarios. I don't have the money or I don't have the desire, I don't value this very much. You could be a professional detailer and roll for many, many years with a machine like the three inch and the five inch here. I don't recommend you consider 
the hybrid machines, the PXE80, the new Griot's Boss Hybrid. I just don't like, it's like, it's like you have a machine that's not very good as a one inch and it's not very good as a three inch, so it's not really good at anything. Uh, I want a dedicated machine designed to operate. This is a 13 millimeter orbit, long throw, three inch machine, can get a lot of work done, can then hit the areas that you're missing out on that you can't hit with a five inch. So machine number two is this guy. You know, this is like a couple hundred bucks and it is, you know, really great. I mean, I'm not gonna use this now. I'm using the Merca $880 battery powered version. Um, but if I was, you know, 21 years old, man, I would have dreamt to have this sucker. Uh, and so that's something that, um, that, that I think you would start, you, you go to next. Then the next thing that's important is the polish. And I'm gonna blaspheme here. I told you professionals and you long-term detailers to turn, turn this video off. You're still here, I appreciate that. Maybe you should like the video. Um, but the, uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna tell you, forget about assessing the paint. Forget about test spots. Forget about getting lights out and try to figure out what's going on with the paint. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna do a little aside here at the end of the video. I do need to address some water spots here, but I'm gonna pretend I don't know any of that stuff. Um, I just want you to move some freaking polish around and I want you to focus on pad flatness. I want you to focus on speed. You know, how I don't wanna be moving stuff around. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I've shown you a hundred times, but I'm gonna show you again how we're gonna polish and what matters. And so this Griot's Boss polish, I mean, I love the Jess Car stuff. I do like Cut Max a lot. I think that the Griot's Fast Correcting Cream in the world of compounding or polishing is probably the best idiot proof system. It has tons of cut, so it has the ability to improve or reduce defects, uh, but it finishes okay, meaning that when you're done cutting, when you're done with your four or five passes, uh, you end up with a pretty nice result uh, that then you can then finish up with perfect finish. So I would tell you, I'm gonna show you how to do this in a second, I'm gonna polish, uh, say, one foot or say 18 inch by 18 inch section. I'm gonna do four passes. Uh, I'm gonna do that with a microfiber pad uh, and, and Griot's Fast Correcting Cream. I'm not gonna worry about looking at it or looking for scratches or seeing how it did because it's gonna do pretty darn well on pretty much every paint. Uh, and then I'm gonna finish with foam and perfect finish. And I'm gonna do a two step really no matter what. You know, this car probably is right at the borderline of not needing a two-step, um, but I can rest assured that I'm going to get to, say, 85 to 90 percent result, even if I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So again, I'm blaspheming here in the world of professional paint correction and all of that, but I'm telling you, let's keep it simple. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So you have these two polishes, these two pads. I have 10 other pads in there and 10 other polishes in there uh, that you develop that skill set over time. But if you're looking to enter into polishing, this would be my advice. Rupes Yellow Microfiber Cutting Pad. This is by no means entry level, uh, but it's, you know, it's not that expensive, not that much more than cheap pads. This is pretty much the best microfiber cutting pad in the world. Uh, and then Rupes Yellow uh, Microfiber Foam Pad, I'm sorry, not microfiber, foam pad for finishing. This is, I believe, to be the best foam pad in the, on the darn planet. And I think that you want, especially because you guys are starting out, you probably don't have an air compressor, uh, and so you're gonna want six of each size. So six of five inch of the microfiber, six five inch foam, uh, three of the, uh, six of the three inch and six of the, the three inch foam. Uh, you're gonna want those because you're gonna need to be replacing pads pretty often. In this case, I would do probably this whole rear clip. So I'd do the, the whole trunk, the whole rear bumper, kind of maybe even part of the side fenders, and then I'm gonna swap the pad. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to clean up the pad a little bit, not nearly as good as blowing it out with, a, with, a, with an air compressor, uh, but we'll scrub the pad. The other thing you're gonna need is some tape, and I guess I've run out of tape, uh, but this tape is um, one inch. Uh, there's quarter inch and two inch size that we sell in our main big package. But I think, again, if you're starting out one inch, you can do everything with one inch, can't do everything with two inch. Uh, and so the one inch tape is what you need, and apparently I need to go get some more of it. Uh, you also want CarPro Eraser 
uh, it won't come in this fancy bottle, this Presso bottle. You know, this is something you need to upgrade to. Um, but uh, CarPro Eraser is an isopropyl alcohol um, product that you would use to either pre-clean before polishing or, you know, in most cases, post-clean. So clean the polish off before you can do the coating. Coating and waxing and all that stuff is a separate video. We're not going to get into that today. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that you need are towels. I like to have low pile and high pile towels, but for the purposes of this, you can always get everything done with a high pile. Sometimes the low pile can mar the surface depending on what kind of, what kind of paint you have. Uh, but this is a 350 GSM towel from the Rag Company called the Edgeless 350. When you get into the real heavy ones, like the 400, 500 GSM ones, you don't gain anything from it. Uh, and so I think that this is the appropriate towel and I think you want about 10 of these. So we have 10 in our package. Uh, and then the last thing you have is the caw tool, which is our applicator and our scrubber. So let's get into polishing and I'll talk to you about what, uh, what needs to be done here. Okay, so it's time to polish. Let me get these things out of here, out of my way. Let me plug in my polisher. I'm using, can I, when I start thinking about starting out, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got so much yuppie stuff in this garage to make it to make my polishing process so much easier. But we don't all get this right off the bat. In fact, sometimes you know, we never get all this stuff. So I'm, se I'm, I'm sensitive to that. Despite what people think. Man, I really wanna go grab the air compressor, but no air compressor. I don't have an air compressor for this part got to just deal with the microfiber. It's always great to blow out the pad before you before you start. So we'll just do a little dust up here. So you can see why I like to blow out the pad first. Okay, so we're gonna do our compounding, or this is doing our correction. This is doing the part that's removing the scratches, the swirls, and stuff like that. This paint is in pretty good, good condition. I don't have a wob of zooming in here because again, the goal of this is not, like we're not micromanaging this. We just wanna move some polish around and improve the finish. Uh, we're not looking for perfection. You don't know how to get to perfection yet. That's what I'm talking about here. That's on the next video. We'll talk about how to get to your perfecting. In fact, that's what I've been talking about over and over all, the, all these years. Microfiber, I, I'm a primer. I like to prime both microfiber and foam. I figure it certainly can't hurt to make sure I've got product in all of the pores of our, of our microfiber. So then I take, this is why this tool is important, makes it easier than having to use your finger like we used to do. I think this is worth the 17 bucks, even if you're starting out. So now my pad is primed and ready to go. And I'm gonna take and add a couple of dots of product, like so. Two pea-sized dots. That's more like a lima bean size, but you want pea-sized dots. Uh, and then we're gonna pick an area. So in this case, I'm gonna do a roughly you know, 18 inch by 18 inch area. And I'm gonna have to sort of duck underneath the, uh, underneath the, the wing here, which is, you know, part of, part of life when you're polishing a car. So a lot of people will like to kind of do this. I generally don't, but you can kind of spread it around if you like before you turn the machine on. I'm gonna spread on speed two. I'm gonna polish on probably speed five. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, in this 18 by 8 to foot and a half by foot and a half section, I'm going to do four sets of passes. So I'm gonna go four this way, four that, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna go one all the way up and down, two, three, four. And then watch my speed. Spread it around. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention was taping. Uh, and in fact, if I was really smart, what do I do with my freaking tape? Just to be safe, especially when you're starting out, always err on the side of tape versus no tape. 
uh, would be my recommendation. So in this case, uh, I taped off the black plastic here. I'm not going, or black rubber. Uh, and I'm gonna put a little piece of tape here as well because I don't wanna burn through the side of my carbon fiber piece here. So that way when I'm butting up or coming close to this here, I'm not gonna hit this. So I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and put it there. This is a, if I can give you any tip, this will save you. Do this to like your door handle or anything you're gonna come up close to uh, because you run the risk of jacking it up. So then I've spread my polish around. I'm gonna go to speed five. I like four better. So I'm worried about it being flat. pick a hard spot to do. to pick a bad spot for me to teach you how to polish here. So I did four sets of passes. Let me explain it a little better if you can see this here. So I went this way and I went all the way around like this. And that was one. And then I went around like this. That's two. And then I went back up and down again. That's three. And I went around back and forth again. That's four. So I did four sets of cross hatch passing. And the other thing you noticed me do, and it's a little hard because of the wing here, but if I polished here and I was going up and down, then my next pass would be here. So I wanted to overlap that quite a bit. Now this is pretty dicey because, because of the wing. I didn't pick the smartest area to show you how to polish here because this is a little more complicated. Uh, I actually went up to speed five. The polisher was, uh, was not grabbing quite as much. It was a little easier to manage. And what I'm looking to do, the thing that you'll do often when you're starting out is you'll tend to lift up the pad. You won't notice it because you're driving too much with your back hand. Uh, and so I want to make sure that I keep the thing flat. And so I'm doing almost all of my managing of the machine. This hand is just a guide hand, so most of the managing of the machine is through my thumb, the heel of my hand and my thumb. And, you know, and, and then my fingers are just kind of resting. So if I had a big flat panel here without this, you know, without this wing in the way, it'd be quite a bit easier to do. The other thing I did was take my power cord and I threw it over my shoulder so it's not dragging on my fender. We could always come back and correct our fender later, but why make mistakes or marring if we, if we can help it? So after doing that, that's called our compounding stage. So this is the stage we've done to remove defects. And again, in this particular exercise, when you're starting out, I'm asking you to accept that result. So the result we just did there, now remember, when we're polishing, we're removing paint. So I happen to know that that's all this car needs because I've already done you know, half of the darn thing. Um, but the, the, uh, the you know, beginner step, you'd be shocked at how amazing this looks just doing that. All I did was four passes with a microfiber and compound, and I've got a really amazing result. 
but and on silver you won't see this as much on darker colors that polish can be somewhat aggressive uh, and so there will be you know some hazing left behind uh, so we're still going to want to finish this off so let me go through and polish the rest of this section here and uh, i'll come back to you when it's time to do the next step so i don't have an air compressor i need to clean my pad this isn't getting most of the residue and stuff out of the pad. Um, so this is why you need to replace your pads more often. So what we just did when I did those four cross hat hatch passes is I abraded the surface. There's an abrasive in the polish and I've removed clear coat from the surface. Small amounts, you know, microns uh, amount of paint, but I did remove some paint. When you remove some paint, the paint has to go somewhere. Well, the paint is now in the pad. Uh, and so a couple of things you can do, you can kind of agitate the pad. The other thing that a lot of people will do is control the trigger here, but you know, turn the machine on. Scuff up the pad. So again, I'm not really cleaning the pad, but I'm reactivating the fibers to accept you know, some more polish. Uh, in a perfect world, you'd have an air compressor, you could blow it out. Anytime I'm compounding, I like to polish and um, after every step, blow it out with an air compressor. But again, I don't have that in this, in this particular case right now. So this sort of cleaning out the pad, What'll happen is, what you want to be careful of is this Griot's polish is relatively aggressive and it's doing a great job of correcting. And so uh, what I don't want to do is use this pad and go all around the whole car uh, and I get a different result here than I do you know, on the front fender uh, because the pad is so loaded up with gunk that it's no longer correcting the way it was. You want to manage, we'll get into you know, edge work and stuff in future videos, but uh, you want to manage, you'll bring the pad up to the edge if you can help it. I will mention that, that you, if you think about this, if you look at the backing plate, the, backing, the, the pad overhangs the edge of the backing plate. What I really want to do is try to bring the edge of the backing plate up to the edge of the surface. Because if I just carry it over top, or if I carry it over the surface like this, I'm going to miss part of the edge. Uh, but we'll get into that detail. At a, later date so let's wipe our paint here and i'm not saying don't look at the result and when you're starting out i'm saying just don't get too excited about it if you don't have all the lights and all the things that you need this step here of doing this two-step process to the paint will make a remarkable difference and in my case it's making a perfect fix to a little bit of marring, water spotting, and scratching that's uh, on the surface of the car. All right, so here's an example where three inch can be really handy. I mean, I could probably take care of this. Uh, certainly the inside of it would be really helpful to do with a three inch, uh, but the three inch can be handy here. 
Uh, now I want to be careful with this part here, so this is where tape, especially the newer you are into this, the more you want to utilize tape. And I'm freaking almost out of it, so hopefully I have enough here to finish this here. But uh, how am I almost out of tape? This is crazy. I have freaking everything. But what I don't want to do is I want to try to get in here with my three inch, but I don't want to smack my darn fender here. So I'm going to put some tape down here so I don't accidentally hit it with my backing plate and mess something up. Well, that's my last piece of tape, so. So now with the three inch, same system applies, just with a smaller pad. Now this is going to be a bit counterintuitive to you, as it was to me. The smaller the pad, the more aggressive the cut, the more aggressive the, the, you know, the correction is on dual action. In rotary, it's the opposite. The bigger the pad, the more aggressive. So I may be able to make fewer passes here, but if you stick to the same darn formula, four, two up, two down, if you will. Now, keep in mind, the back and forth cross hatching doesn't, you know, I could, I could go this way, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and not ever go up and down. So the up and down, back and forth has nothing to do with the correction. Uh, it only has to do with the keeping things organized. You could just, you know, I could just go and in a back and forth motion and do the same correction here. So the, the motion that you go, because this is a random orbit, it doesn't matter. That's another sort of counterintuitive thing, I guess you could say. Gosh, I know I'm showing you this, but I've become so darn jaded with power cords. I don't need power cords anymore. Okay, so notice, throw this over top, over my shoulder, again, if you were stuck with not having a three inch polisher, you could freaking knock this out, man. You could do fine with a, with a five inch on a lot of this car and get pretty close to pretty much the whole thing, 100%. Uh, so if you have to start somewhere, you can start with a five inch and, and work, your way up, work your way down in the future. So same thing here, I could do this little thing. I guess I should probably tell you to do this. I don't do it, but a lot of people do. So the reason the methodology here of spreading the polish around is this is a diminishing polish. So the more I use the polish, the more passes I make, the more it breaks down. So now we have an even amount of polish throughout. That's probably a bit much too, but this is a fresh and primed pad. So speed, spread around at speed two. Let's get it around the surface. The other thing I should mention is that uh, the spreading around doesn't count as one of your passes. Let's go speed five. Speed four is better. That was one. That was two.
Notice also, see why I like to blow out my pads because we get a microfiber all over. But notice also how I was standing and that you want to get comfortable, right? So I had it just to like my, my elbows were kind of tucked into my, into my waist. The closer you can get your body to the machine, the better. You'll notice that. I notice this when a lot of you know, people are polishing for the first time, they're kind of all outside themselves. You want to kind of get in there and hold the machine and just, I was actually kind of through my hips just rocking back and forth, keeping the machine nice and flat, nice and controlled. That's what I want you to focus on. I might sound like a teacher here, like I want you, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, that's what I think, you know, if it were me, that's what I would be focusing us on I, when, I'm, when I'm sort of trying to figure this out is, again, I'm not worried about micromanaging, trying to find, find scratches. That's how you're gonna mess stuff up. That's how I, when I was learning, that's how I messed stuff up is I went too, too hard in the paint. You, know, you try to do too much at once, try to learn too much too fast. Uh, and so instead, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to correct the surface, looking to make it look much better. Uh, if you use this good stuff, this is what I'm getting at with this you know, entry level package. This is all great stuff. Uh, and so you can skip a lot of the goofy steps that you're about to make and a lot of the mistakes you're about to make. And if you just focus on keeping the pad flat, focus on how it's moving, keep it moving relatively slow, uh, do four sets of passes. Don't worry about, well, maybe if I did five, it'd be a little better, or two would be better. Uh, just do four. Do, we're gonna do four of the same thing with finishing and you're gonna get a result that's like better than like pretty much anybody else is gonna get. So uh, then we can get into more sophisticated things after you have more time with the machine. All right, so let me finish this section here and then we'll come back to uh, finish polishing. So if you do have the coin, you're just being cheap on me here considering the entry level package, the differences you'll see, like if we went up to like a Rupes LHR, is smoothness. The machine has less vibration through, you know, through the handle. Um, this machine tends to want to kind of jump around a little bit more. So I would argue that this is actually a little bit harder to learn on than a Rupes machine that's super smooth. Uh, the other thing you would gain if you went up in package, if you went up to like cordless, you know, you have the, the Milwaukee and the Rupes and the Merca polishers. Um, so you would gain that as you go up in price in the polishers. But this is fully capable. I could polish this whole darn car and get an amazing result just doing that, uh, by doing it that way. So, yeah, it's freaking perfect. Not looking, not looking. You're gonna look, that's the whole point of polishing. I'm not micromanaging. It's good, it's really good. So now we're gonna get a little bit extra jeweling. Most people would say, well, I'm not gonna gain anything by, uh, by doing any finishing, but I promise you will. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention to you that you should do. Ah! Get yourself a black marker especially when you're starting out. Pick a spot, doesn't matter. Pick any spot on your, on your, on your backing plate. I'm gonna take my marker, and I'm gonna make a line. Make it relatively fat, say quarter inch or so. And that black line will help me see if the machine's stalling out or not spinning. What'll happen is when a polisher stops spinning, so a dual action polisher will actually go and spin as well as oscillate in a random fashion. And so if it stops spinning, it's still oscillating. So it's still doing some work, but only a fraction of the work that it normally would be doing. This is Uncle Maddie's tip to you. make a black line and you'll be able to see the line better. You'll be able to see if the backing plate is stalled out. All right, so finishing. Normally, this just depends how you want to do this. Um, normally you would compound or polish the whole car. Uh, 
I'm going to spend a little bit more time and care and do much smaller sections when I'm polishing or compounding. Now when I'm finished polishing, I'm just jeweling it up. I'm just shining it up. So I'm not so worried about the edges and all the refined details. Uh, I'm more worried about the, just kind of you know, making it shine a little bit more. And so this is Sonex Perfect Finish. I would caution you, Sonex Perfect Finish, you want to make sure you shake it up really well because it does tend to dust if it's not shaken up. And then you're going to prime a little bit differently. It's a little easier to prime a microfiber pad than it is a foam pad. I prime on the pad, not on the car, is my recommendation. Priming on the fly is a different technique, but we're not going to get into that because I don't actually do that. Spread it around. A little bit more on there. More polish does not mean more work. More polish just means more freaking mess. And so I'm going to put two pea-sized dots like so. And now I broke the trunk up into, let's see, one, two, three sections. Now I'm going to break it up into two. So I'm going to get the work done faster. Same speed. I think speed five is probably the way to go. I'm going to use the push down a little bit less than I was pushing before, but I'm going to try to move my hands in the same speed I did before. Spread it When I'm finishing also, I'll tend to go a little quicker and like don't worry about wiping it off. That way I know exactly where I ended up and just keep kind of keep rolling at times. Wipe off whenever I need a break. And it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be for me to, uh, there's all these tips and stuff I want to be telling you, but I, again, I don't want to overcomplicate it. Just freaking move the stuff around. I probably wouldn't have done four passes there, but just to keep things simple, do four and four and you'll get a great result. And we've got some freaking shiny paint, bros. Shiny, shiny paint. Yep, that looks pretty darn fantastic. Now, in this case, on this car, in this paint, I knew that that four sets of passes, I don't even need to micromanage the darn thing. And so that's what's gonna to happen to you as well. If you do this, if you use this stuff, use these polishers, use these pads, use the polishes, have some Car Pro eraser when you're done with this. I'm gonna spray whatever the heck I did with it. I'm gonna spray some eraser on here and wipe the polish residue off before I do any waxing and coating. 
go check out some of the videos I have on applying on, on this car. I'm going to do uh, Crystal Serum Light topped with uh, XO version 5 from G Technic. Super easy to do. But uh, if you follow this step or these process, you stick to the basics, work on pad flatness, follow the speed that I'm following. Um, you're always better off going slower than faster. Uh, remember, we're not applying a wax here. The polish, we're trying to get the, the scratches out of the surface and get it really shiny. Uh, we're not just applying, we're not, the, the, the polish isn't doing anything, anything other than uh, acting as an abrasive. Uh, and so I wanna let the polish do its job, do its work. Uh, but if you're uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing and uh, really, you know, if you like these videos, I um, appreciate your support. Uh, I should have polished a better spot on the car, uh, but my videos are day in the life. This is where I'm at on the car, and so I'm bringing you along with me, and I wanted to make this sort of entry-level polishing package video. The polishing package is now available in the store. Link is in the description. It's also in the card up above. Go to ObsessedGarage.com. And uh, the things that I ask for, I generally don't run stuff on sale. Uh, we only run one sale a year, Black Friday generally. Uh, and um, I'm asking you to pay shipping. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that, um, that, that doesn't deter you. Uh, the reason I'm asking for that is uh, I, I'm buying products from all over the darn world. I don't get the buying power that I would, a normal retailer would have. Uh, and so for me to be offering discounts and you know, offer free shipping all the time. We, we don't have the margins to, to be able to do that. So, and be able to, you know, do projects like this and create the, hopefully the quality content that you're used to seeing. So anyway, that's the Matt Mormon Obsessed Garage version of what I would call, let's call this sort of progression two. Uh, let's call it progression one A. Uh, in that you get to skip all of the progression one stuff, all the stupid mistakes of buying all the junk. Uh, this will get you started, get you a great result, uh, and have you skip a lot of the goofy steps that you know, I've had to make and most of us had to make over the years uh, and get you a really high quality set of stuff. You're gonna pay a little bit more uh, than you would if you hodgepodge together at you know, AutoZone and Walmart and other places and, uh, and get you gatewayed into deciding do I want to go to you know higher levels of polishing? Start getting lights and getting you know different different things to improve the experience, improve the result of your work. But right there, um, you're going to be in the top one percent of uh, every anybody at Cars and Coffee, no matter how much money they got. So anyway, thanks for your support. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. Um, I like polishing. Actually, I hate it. I got to do the rest of the car. I like polishing like that much and then, uh, and then let somebody else do the rest. But uh, I'm addicted to the result as I know many of you are. So we'll see you in the next video. Next one will be the $3,000 package of all the polishing stuff that I use as a polishing snob. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. All right, here's a little, <laughs> this probably shouldn't be in the, uh, in the basic video, but uh, Ooh, got some uh, wheel brightener here. I got some water spots. I need to get these off. So I'm gonna mix up a little wheel brightener, four to one. I'm gonna just eyeball it. So this is a wheel acid, so it's a wheel cleaner, but it's an acid that can help remove or at least break down water spots. So I just grab my, shoot, I probably shouldn't have done that. I need a towel. So this is what you used to use back in the day to clean up, uh, clean up wheels, and we need to dilute this. Uh, a water spot remover, you'll find, doesn't really remove water spots uh, completely. So a combination of water spot remover and polishing is important. All right, that's a good old fashioned eyeballed four to one there, <laughs> roughly. And so when you're removing water spots, especially if they're stubborn. I don't know how stubborn these are gonna be, but what I do know is when I polish this, I'm probably gonna, the water spots are gonna disappear. What I don't want is I don't want the water spots to come back. Uh, and so the way to get rid of a water spot, uh, it, generally speaking, the product you're using are like, like CarPro Spotless or Kamikaze Descale or like all these different products. Uh, generally the water spot remover is not gonna remove the water spot on its own. Uh, but what you need to do first, I learned this from Ivan LaCroix uh, from when he was back with, with Optimum, you need to chemically break down 
the, at least especially the surface contamination of the water spot. But generally with a spot remover, it's chemically breaking it down, uh, but it doesn't, there's usually sort of the head or the leftover stuff that's sort of squeezed into the, into the clear coat. Uh, but if we at least get the vast majority of the chemical removed, uh, then, then we can um, polish the rest of it off and then hopefully they won't come back. Worst case scenario, if you have some really nasty water spots, uh, what you can do is, uh, I've, I've done this before, I have a video on my uh, previous E92M3 where I heated up the paint to try to get the heat, get the temperature up to about 120 degrees, which would then sort of open the pores. Uh, not the same way you heat up paint when you heat it up with a polisher and then you can you know, pull the, 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 the chemical out uh, or pull the, the, you know, the, the mineral etching out. But this one has some pretty light water spots, but I don't want them to, I don't want them to uh, come back. And so I'm using Meguiar's Wheel Brightener, which is an acid wheel cleaner. Soak this down pretty well. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of wipe it in place here. Make sure I got decent coverage. So this acid is gonna break down the mineral content of the water spot, and then I'll get the rest of it when I polish. Leave that on there for 60 seconds or so. And when I remove this, I've got a waterless wash where um, I'll, I'll get the rest of it off here. So those of you who are hoping that you're, you know, your, uh, your, your spot remover is just gonna magically wipe away you're gonna just wipe away our water spot. It generally doesn't work that way. So you're almost always gonna to have to polish as well. And then I need to get this crap off of here. So I've got some N914. Gosh, this stuff is so nasty. Let's get the rest of this out of here. I'd always been complaining about water spot removers. I'm like, this doesn't freaking work. Well, we're gonna get most of the mineral content removed from the you know, acid breaking it down or the, you know, the descaling properties of the water spot remover. And then we'll get the rest of it, get the base of it or head of it or whatever you wanna call it when I'm polishing. Get that. wheel acid out of here. So that's it. And then go back to the video where I talk about polishing. Just wanted to throw that little aside in here because I wanted to do that on the trunk. And it was really only on the trunk that had some water spot etching that I wanted to make sure I chemically broke down before I attacked it with a polisher.